with the YouTube adpocalypse still looming over many channels. If you want to support this one, check out my Teespring store for the latest merch. Kingsman. That's a fan. That's a fantastic franchise so far. It is. It really is. Kingsman: The Secret Service is far greater than the Golden Circle, obviously. Um, but I still feel like Golden Circle was a fun movie, even if it did a couple of things that I was really kind of like taken aback by, um, like Merlin, right? Like, what the hell's up with that? Also, the bringing back of Harry Hart was a little bit odd, but I still thought it was stylistic and very much in line with uh, with the parody of what it was trying to do. Which, if you look at Secret Service, Secret Service is a parody of the Sean Connery era of Bond, uh, the very gentleman spy right era. And then the Golden Circle was very much uh, parodying the um, uh, Roger Moore version of it. That was the whole point. That was the over-the-top gadgets, over-the-top you know, bad guys over the top bases, things like that. That was very Roger Moore, which means that for the future, because Matthew Vaughn is sharing his Kingsman plans, uh, as well as showing there's going to be more there with, <laughs> with that. Um, let me make sure that's turned off. I didn't even see that shit. Uh, all right. That's <laughs> okay. So yeah, Matthew Vaughn shares his Kingsman's plans, a reboot for kick-ass and hit girl. And I think that uh, I think these are all good things. I think these are all very, very, very good things. Now, Matthew Vaughn's collaboration with comic book writer Mark Millar resulted in two different film franchises, Kingsman and Kick-Ass, both of which have spawned sequels. And according to Vaughn, he is far from finished with either property. This is a great thing. Vaughn, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated directors working today. He does not get the love that he deserves. He doesn't get the love that he deserves. And even though he they tried a little bit with X-Men First Class, and I think that coming in last minute and, and turning the entire thing uh, around and getting it out in 11 months uh, and having it be as good as it was, because it was good. It was definitely good. Not perfect, but still good. Uh, shows you the tenacity of this particular uh, writer, director. And, uh, and like I said, Kick-Ass was, was a movie that Nicolas Cage should have been nominated for an Oscar for his performance as Big Daddy. It was such a fun, stylistic take on comic book movies back eight years ago that now definitely needs to come back and lampoon the genre once again. Kick-Ass 2 was also fun, but Jeff Wadlow's sequel focused more on the crazy, crazy bits, and that ended up causing it some problems, especially with some of the source material and the fact that it, it failed to connect with audiences in the way that the first one did, and which is sad because I actually kind of liked it. Uh, now it says, while speaking with Empire Magazine, Vaughn shared his ambitious plans to carry Kingsman forward after the second movie. Vaughn revealed that he plans to shoot two Kingsman films back to back, including Kingsman, The Great Game, a spin-off prequel that will take place in the early 1900s. The other movie would essentially be Kingsman 3, which would depict the conclusion of the Harry Hart Eggsy relationship that began in the first film. Vaughn also indicated that there may be an eight hour Kingsman TV show or even a spin-off film about Statesman, the American spy organization introduced in the golden circle. Now that is a lot of Kingsman. That is a huge, huge, huge plan for Kingsman. And the question really does boil down to how are we going to do it? How, how are we going to do it? How, how, how is he going to be able to do this? And well, the answer to that is actually pretty easy because it's going to boil down to Netflix, right? Netflix. And, and, and I could, again, I could entirely be wrong on this one, but this is what my, what my gut's telling me. Netflix has basically, you know, they paid out 300 million, to, to Mark Millar for Millar World, and they're going to produce his content. And people very much want another kick-ass movie. There's a new kick-ass comic right now, which we'll talk about here in a second. But when it comes to Kingsman, Kingsman was, was with 20th Century Fox. And 20th Century Fox, like he doesn't want to mess with that, apparently. He doesn't want to mess with that deal. Uh, course, this is what Matthew Vaughn said a while ago when, uh, when the first uh, de details came out for Millar World's purchase. However, if Fox is going to get purchased by Disney... He may say, fuck it. He may say, fuck it and go do his own thing. And he's, he's, he's all the better for it, really. Because if Disney, we know, like, is really only going to protect the R-rated sanctity of Deadpool because it's a billion dollar property. Both Kingsman, Secret Service, and Kingsman 2 pulled in 404 million worldwide and 408 million worldwide, respectively, with their home video sales only being 37 million for Kingsman Secret Service, as well as only 20 million for the Golden Circle. And so that is not a lot of money, not enough to warrant uh, really kind of sticking with Fox, uh, everything else. But when it comes to this uh, this TV series that they're going to do, uh, that could be something very cool. That could tell uh, a story, a side story or, or, or whatever else and shit. And that could be a lot of fun. 
I don't know how they would do it. I, I think, but the uh, the great game where it's the creation of the, or not so much the uh, the creation of the Kingsman, but taking place in the early 1900s could be a lot of fun and also introduced to a new character, which that could tie into the TV series. And like I said, Netflix, $8 billion a year they're spending on this content. They want, they want comic book properties as a way to rival Disney, which is releasing their uh, streaming service next year, as well as... Um, what is it? The other one, it's, uh, uh, DC universe, which is launching in late August of this year. So to compete on that front, Netflix very much wants to do this. And I have a feeling that's really going to come in for what they plan on doing. So going into kick-ass here, it says, uh, the, the, as for kick-ass, the second movie didn't quite do well enough to earn a direct sequel. That may be why Vaughn described his plans as a reboot of the series, while hinting that the next sequel could follow Patience Lee, the latest incarnation of the comic. Patience is an African-American woman who took up the mantle of Kick-Ass. Uh, she's also like a former soldier. I think she lives in like New Mexico or something. and She fights crime uh, all while trying to protect her daughter. And I guess the com I haven't read it yet, but I've heard nothing but good things about it. So I think that that's probably going to be what they're going for now. And this probably is going to be a lot to do with the whole um, diversity in uh, initiatives that we're seeing in these particular properties and everything else. And again, as we've discussed previously, I have no problem with that. I want the characters to be good. And I trust in Mark Millar and I trust in Matthew Vaughn. Uh, but also... Uh, a hit girl could, could be happening. A solo hit girl movie is also on Vaughn's agenda, which may catch up the title character when she is older or focus on her origin and her training under her father, Big Daddy. See, I don't want there to be a hit girl origin movie. That's kind of what Kick-Ass was. We got a couple of the flashbacks, but you're not going to be able to recreate Nicolas Cage and Chloe Grace Moretz's dynamic. That's not going to be happen. I don't, I don't think so. People aren't going to be happy with it because Nicolas Cage was so well loved in that role. People walked out of Kick-Ass in 2010 going... God damn, where, where has Nicolas Cage been? Right? Where, where has Nicolas Cage been? Where, would, why he's so good? He's so good. What the hell happened? That's a big part of it. And so I think doing a solo movie and maybe tying into Kick Ass is going to be okay. Now, it does finish up here by saying if Vaughn elects to go with Patience Lee led Kick Ass film, that would potentially allow Aaron Taylor Johnson's Dave Lazowski to return at some point. Uh, similarly, an older Hit Girl movie would be ideal for Chloe Grace Moretz if she's interested in reprising the role, which, look, let's be fair, I, I'm pretty certain she is. Because uh, when's the last time you saw Chloe Grace Moretz in anything really big? That movie, The Wave, that was that young adult novel that was just garbage of a film that nobody went to go see. I mean, her career needs some kind of revive right now. I think of getting her back into the spotlight and what could be seen as a good, uh, well-received movie. And she was in that Louis C.K. one. Uh, the daddy, I love you, but that because of the controversy of Louis CK and him, him not having the ability to not touch himself, um, you know, uh, led to that and getting, getting pulled and everything else. And so, uh, yeah, I think at this point, what we're seeing here ultimately is uh, a good vehicle for her to come back. And the only, stu you know, here's, here's the thing to remember and I'll, and I'll, I'll move on to the next story. But uh, the thing to remember about this is that Matthew Vaughn always independently finances his own movies. The first kick-ass was a $30 million budget. And it brought a lot of cash in. He, he independently financed both uh, Kingsman films. And this is what he does. He This is how he gets around dealing with studios and dealing with these, these producers and their notes. And that's why I think that if this Disney deal starts to go through, which we're going to find out more about that here pretty soon, he's probably going to end up looking at Netflix because Netflix will just be like, yeah, bro, do whatever the fuck you want. We don't care. Here's a check. Give us something good. And that's that's generally generally what they want to do with that.